It's hard enough to understand the refrigeration cycle, never mind a heat pump. And if you guys want more information on the refrigeration cycle, if you want to learn more about it first before watching this video, check out the link I'm going to leave you here. And you can watch that video, understand some more stuff, and then come back to this one after. What I'd like to talk about specifically is water-cooled heat pumps, how they function. I have some experience with water-cooled heat pumps in my earlier days in the trade in high-rise buildings and how they maintain that loop. So I'm going to talk about this specifically on this video and water-cooled heat pumps use a special coil called a coaxial coil and this is what one looks like so I've just shown you what a coaxial coil looks like for this diagram here I've simplified it in one pass in a U instead of drawing a spiral which could be confusing if you're just learning coaxes coaxial coils are water-cooled coils that is their sort of trade name now what we're gonna do with a coax coil is we're gonna enter fluid in the one side and it's gonna move through the middle of the assembly. This is a tube in tube assembly. Enter refrigerant on the other side and it's gonna move across the outside. For maximum heat transfer, we have counter flow. Fluid one way, refrigerant the other. If they were both flowing together, they wouldn't be transferring heat as well as if they were counter flowing. So coaxial coil, just remember, it's a water-cooled coil, tube in tube, water, or glycol flows down the middle, refrigerant flows on the outside, and we're providing counterflow for maximum heat transfer. So the way these water-cooled heat pumps work is that in the cooling mode, that coaxial coil, in my experience, is going to be the condenser. And then you're gonna have an air coil that's gonna be the evaporator, and there's gonna be a blower moving air across that evaporator, absorbing heat from the space, cooling it down. In the heating mode, we're gonna reverse that through the reversing valve. We're gonna send our hot discharge gas to that air coil. The blower is gonna push the air across it, putting the heat, rejecting the heat into the space, warming the space up. And the coaxial coil at this point is gonna be our evaporator. Now in a water-cooled heat pump system, that coaxial coil is either gonna be the condenser or the evaporator, depending on which mode we're in, heating or cooling. We're gonna provide constant flow through that coil with a pump, and we're also gonna balance that system with a balancing valve as well. The temperature of the fluid being provided to that coaxial coil is also gonna maintain a constant temperature, usually around 80 degrees. And the way we do that in the summertime, obviously we're in the cooling mode, we have to reject that heat from the loop somewhere. So we're gonna use a cooling tower to do that. Now in the winter time, because we're gonna be absorbing heat from the loop, that coax coil is gonna absorb heat from the loop. That means that loop temperature is gonna drop below 80 degrees. We need to put heat back into that loop. And the way we do that is with inline boiler systems. Just a quick recap here on the coax coil. It's a tube in tube system that provides counter flow. So fluid's gonna move in one side, it's gonna stay in the middle, move through that coaxial coil. Refrigerant's gonna enter on the other side, it's gonna stay on the outside of that tube in tube system, and it's gonna provide counter flow for maximum heat transfer. It can be the evaporator or the condenser in a water cooled heat pump system. We're gonna use a cooling tower in a system like this to reject the heat, and we're gonna use boilers in a system like this to put the heat back in to the system. Coaxial coils are also used in water cooled systems as well for air conditioning. And the way it works with air conditioning is a little bit different than heat pumps. In heat pumps, we're providing full flow with a balancing valve. With an air conditioning unit with a water cooled coaxial coil, we're using a water reg valve. That water reg valve is set to the discharge pressure that you want and it maintains that discharge pressure by opening and closing that valve to maintain that pressure. Now in the past I've seen a lot of coaxial coils water-cooled systems especially for air conditioning where they just dump the water down the drain. Now that's not really allowed in a lot of places anymore. So now if you're putting in a water-cooled system it better be on a closed loop or you're not going to get away with it in most municipalities because of code regulations because you can't dump that city water I've also seen it on refrigeration systems, mainly on walk-in boxes for older restaurants where they used a coaxial coil, a water-cooled coax, and they would just dump that water down the drain. Now, you have to replace those with an air-cooled system. Obviously, your condenser is going to get dirtier and you got to clean it because you don't have that water-cooled system anymore, but it's better than dumping that water down the drain and wasting the resources. Anyway, guys, I've given you a quick video on coax coils, how they're used, where they're used how they function. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Subscribe to the channel, like, hit the bell. Happy HVACing.